Hi, my name is Richard Louie with MSNBC, and I'm here to tell you about a very important program. It's called Yielding the Floor, Reflections of Asian Pacific Americans in the Nation's Capital. It's a series of oral history interviews of Asian Pacific American members of the United States Congress and is produced by the United States Capitol Historical Society. Did you know that over 12,000 men and women have served in the U.S. Congress? And of those, 43 have been Americans of Asian Pacific descent. That includes delegates and resident commissioners of U.S. territories and commonwealths. Now, although that group may seem small, it has been an important one. Today, there are 12 members of Congress that are of Asian Pacific descent. This series includes discussions with seven current and former members of Congress, Senators Daniel Akaka, Daniel Inouye, Representatives Michael Honda, Doris Matsui, Delegate Ini Venga from American Samoa, former Delegate Robert Underwood from Guam, and Representative from California and Cabinet Secretary Norman Mineta. The United States Capitol Historical Society is a private, nonpartisan, nonprofit educational organization chartered by the U.S. Congress to promote the history of the Capitol and Congress. We hope these oral recollections will assist in the public's better understanding of the human dimension of representative government. Being in this job is probably the best job I've ever had because it provides me the greatest opportunity to be involved in almost every issue that one can think of that's important to our families, our, our individuals, to both domestically and internationally and um, how to work with um, people and staff to um, extract information as quickly as possible, digest it, and then come up with a, uh, a position based upon my values, my principles, my history. The privilege is this, that all of us come from different backgrounds and history and experiences. And those who, of us who remember what we've learned, what we've realized, what we've lost, um, in terms of language, culture, history, and things like that. If, we're, if we remember those things and we think about policy, we can convert our private lives into public policy. And when we do that, then we've engaged other people who may have had the same background and experience. And to capture that makes public policy making uh, more precise and well, elegant. When I became a politician, Hawaiians were on the bottom of this social and economic and political ladder. And I did my best uh, to see that they're provided with the basic necessities of life, education and health. Well, as a member of Congress, I, I would look at the success of the Congressional Black Caucus or the uh, Hispanic Caucus and think, uh, gee, we, didn't, we don't have one for uh, uh, a caucus that looks out after the interests of uh, Asian Pacific Islanders. <clears throat> and so um, I started inquiring about how the Congressional Black Caucus and the Hispanic Caucus operated <clears throat> and uh, then called on not only Asian Pacific American members of Congress, but more importantly, uh, those congressional districts across the country where you would have a relatively large uh, Asian Pacific American uh, uh, population and <clears throat> enlist those members to join the caucus. I guess the whole issue of being a good listener uh, listening to all the kinds of points of view that you have coming at you. Uh, but by the same token, none of us can do things to satisfy everybody. So you have to find out what is it that's going to be the best for the greater good. And uh, so I, over the years, whether it was as a member of the city council, mayor, a member of Congress, or executive branch, always trying to figure out where is that path that uh, gives you uh, the greater good? I'm smilingly saying that, uh, that my ethnicity of being Hawaiian, uh, people tell me, oh, you know, that brings out your personality and your, <clears throat> your relationships with people. And uh, the Chinese brings out the business in me. <laughs> And uh, 
and that, that combination works real well. And I would tell you, I think that uh, it does. I have two grandchildren, uh, Anna, who is four, and Robbie, who is a year. They're my touchstone to the future. And I want to ensure that what I do today will make their lives better. And that's not only their lives, but every Anna and Robbie in every neighborhood in this country. So I want my legacy to be that I left this place better off than when I came to this place. We hope you've enjoyed viewing this highlight video. To see the complete interviews with these members of Congress, you can go to the United States Capitol Historical Society's website at www.uschs.org. There you will learn more about these inspiring Americans and their public service to our country.